I've been following the GPU market for many, many years, and let me tell you guys, it hasn't always been sunshine and roses, but recently there have been a number of price drops and new SKUs that have made it a lot better. But the question is, what are the best new GPUs in 2024, and should you buy one at all? Well, let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Okay, so let's dive right in, starting from the least performant GPUs all the way up to the highest end GPUs you can buy, and price will be a major factor in this list. And by the way, there will be affiliate links to every single GPU in the description below. So for your convenience and my benefit, be sure to make good use of those links. But let's start off with the ARC A580. Now, this is an interesting GPU because it does come in at roughly $160. And for the price, it is actually overall, I think, a pretty decent GPU. The drivers were a little bit rough with ARC on launch, but they've certainly gotten a lot better. And coming in with 8 gigabytes of memory and a full 16 lane PCIe 4 connection and true XCSS plus FSR for upscaling. Well, I actually think that overall, if you're into a very entry level system, this is actually an A tier GPU course could easily be maybe B tier, but I think for the price that is pretty decent in 2024. Now the ARC A750, while this is roughly around 15% faster than the A580, it still has eight gigabytes of VRAM and it actually comes in at roughly $200 right now over on places like Amazon. And that's a 25% increase in price for just 15% more performance. So I think this actually has to drop in to the B tier category, although maybe with time these can can get significantly faster as the drivers have been improving at a crazy rate. Now the ARC A770, this is the final and fastest GPU that Intel has available so far until Battle Mage launches potentially later this year. And with that being said, the 16 gigabyte model can be had right now for roughly $280, although I have seen it for less in the past. So be sure to check the links for these GPUs, even if you feel like they're priced a bit higher than you like, as you might actually find a better deal depending on the time of year and if there's sales going on. Now, this is coming in at roughly 40% higher in terms of price versus the A750, and it's only around 10% faster. So for that reason, even though 16 gigabytes of VRAM is really good at the current price, I think it has to be C tier, although in the past, I would have maybe placed it B tier or even higher when it was going for bottom of the barrel prices. But now let's go ahead and move on to the first AMD GPU, the RX 7600. The 7000 series overall definitely has some great features as they are finally giving you some pretty good GPU encoding as well as upscaling. And of course you do get DisplayPort 2.1, although be aware, I do believe most, if not all the GPUs are limited to 54 gigabits per second. So not the full 80 gigabits that you would need for an uncompressed 4K 240 Hertz. So with that being said, I think this thing coming in at roughly $260 is actually better than the ARC A770 for, yeah, $20 less. Although you are getting half the VRAM and you're actually only gonna be getting a PCIe 4 times eight connection. So for that reason, I don't wanna put in S or A tier as if you have a PCIe 3 gen system, well, this won't be a great option as you will be losing performance. So I do think this is a B tier GPU in 2024, but now let's move on to Nvidia's first card here, the RTX 4060. Now this thing, by the way, the 7600 is around 5% faster than the A770. Now the 4060, basically the exact same performance and also the same eight gigabytes of VRAM. Well, not exactly the same, but you get the point. Eight gigabytes of VRAM and just eight lanes of PCIe 4 once again, except for this is not $260, this is roughly $300. And while Nvidia does have DLSS, which definitely is superior, 
I feel like that increase in price simply makes it not worth it. And using upscaling at resolutions like 1080p and even 1440p sometimes can't look that great. So if you're buying this for 1080p, DLSS kinda not that usable. But if you're stretching into 1440p, yeah, maybe that would be a better reason to buy it than AMD. But overall, I actually think this is a C tier card and the AMD card is better at its reduced price. Now, moving on to the RTX 4060 Ti, this one also still only has eight gigabytes of VRAM and eight lanes of Gen 4, and at $400 or a 33% increase over the RTX 4060, but only giving you 20% more performance, I actually think this is even worse than the RTX 4060, landing all the way in D tier, so not too great there. But here we go, guys. This is where things definitely start to get good. The RX 7700 XT definitely didn't have the greatest launch price as I believe it was around $450, but it has recently dropped to just $380 roughly, which is a really good price, I think, for this GPU, considering you get 12 gigabytes of VRAM, a full 16 Gen 4 lanes, and well, you are missing out on DLSS and the better XCSS, but it does have upscaling and for 15% more performance and a lower price in the 4060 Ti, I think this is actually at the current price right now in S tier GPU. I would highly recommend this. And once again, affiliate links in the description if you are interested. I just feel like this is a great GPU at its current price if you're building a new system or simply upgrading an older rig. Now moving on to the RTX 4070, here I feel like it offers a bit less value, although DLSS certainly can start to play a role in this price and performance range. Now, this probably will be around 15% faster than the RX 7700 XT, and it does have a full 16 lanes and 12 gigabytes of VRAM, but at 40% higher price at $530 roughly, that is a lot more, and I feel like actually this needs to be probably a B tier GPU based on the newer graphics cards that NVIDIA's launched. Moving on to the RX 7800 XT, this one I do think offers a bit more value. When it first launched, it was certainly smacking the RTX 4070 around. I mean, we're talking about 10% more performance, 16 gigabytes of VRAM, a full 16 lanes, which by the way, all these other GPUs going forward do have 16 lanes. Now it doesn't have DLSS, it only has FSR, but at $480 today, that's a significantly better deal in my opinion, and I do think this deserves to be A tier. It could maybe be considered S tier, but I feel like it needs another $30 off to really land in right next to the 7700 XT, as the 7700 XT does indeed offer a bit better value today than the 7800 XT. But now let's move on to the RTX 4070 Super, and I do feel like this is a much stronger card than the RTX 4070 Overall, it's much more performant. We're talking around 20% more performance and around 10% more than the 7800 XT. Still only has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, but it does have the benefits of DLSS, which I do think start to become very relevant at this type of performance level. And coming in at $585 roughly, well, that is 20% more than the 7800 XT, but I do feel like it is offering very strong value as well. So I'm gonna give it an A tier rating for that GPU. But then we have the recently launched 7900 GRE. Now this you can pretty regularly find for around $540, but being no faster than the 4070 Super, you're really just buying it for the extra four gigabytes of VRAM and to save roughly $50 versus that card. And the question is, is it worth it to save 50 bucks to give up DLSS and get four gigabytes more VRAM? And I think that is an interesting question. And for that reason, I think it does have to drop just below the RTX 4070 Super. But now let's move on to the 4070 Ti. And I'll be honest, guys, this is not a good GPU in today's climate. And I suspect it's actually being phased out and will eventually no longer be available. I mean, it's only around 5% faster than the GRE. It still has four gigabytes less of VRAM at 12. And although it does have the better DLSS, we're talking $710 was the cheapest I could find or a 30% increase in price. And that just simply isn't a good deal. In fact, I think this has to drop I would say based on the average price as 710 is kind of unusual actually, I'd put it all the way down into D tier. Now the 4070 Ti Super is certainly a much better card, but 
it still isn't amazing. This is a good card, I think, if you're moving from the 3080 and you want something in a similar-ish price, you know, accounting for inflation, and you're okay with a moderate GPU increase in performance, yeah, I think this would be a good option, but overall, we are talking about just roughly maybe 10% faster than the 4070 Ti, but you are getting, finally, a 16 gigabyte graphics card from NVIDIA, which is actually really, really good. So that being said, I think at $780, or roughly 10% more than the 4070 Ti, this does become, ah, I, you know, this could easily be C tier, but I think I'm gonna slot it into the B tier. I think for the price, it is actually a pretty decent card all around. It's not amazing, but it is pretty decent. Now, I just realized that I said first 16 gigabyte card, but technically the 4060 Ti 16 gig would take that place, but I realized we're gonna skip over that one for this list as the price is pretty bad on it and it's really not gonna be much faster than the 4060 Ti. So let's move on to the 7900 XT. And I'll be honest guys, this is actually dropped in price quite a bit, making it a pretty decent card in 2024. Now, the 7900 XT is a 20 gigabyte graphics card. It's around 5% faster than the 4070 Ti. And it does come in at $80 less, roughly at $699. Now, it does only have FSR and the lesser version of XCSS for its upscaling, but overall, I do think that the value puts it a little bit above the RTX 4070 Ti Super and the ARC A750. So for that reason, I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and slot in right here. Now let's go ahead and move on to the RTX 4080. And this card is just bad right now. It seems to be well in excess of $1,000 in most places. And I think once again, they're phasing this card out. So I just wouldn't look at this card. I'm gonna go ahead and slap it into the D tier. But the RTX 4080 Super on the other hand, is a different story. You can actually find these for often under a thousand dollars. In fact, I found one for around nine hundred and ninety-two dollars, which is forty percent higher than the RX 7900 XT. So that's a big increase in price. But you are getting sixteen gigabytes of VRAM, DLSS, better ray tracing. And yeah, overall the NVIDIA package with some other niceties in their new NVIDIA app. So for that reason, you know, I still feel like this is priced a little too high, but I am gonna, I don't know, this is tough. I could easily put it top of C tier, but I think I'm gonna be a little bit nice to it and give it bottom of B tier as I don't really hate this card. It's it's not that bad. It's priced too high, but honestly, the card itself is very good. Now, the 7900 XTX, I do think offers better value than the RTX 4080 Super. You can typically find this thing for close to $900. I found it for around 915, and it is around 10% faster than the 4080 Super. So for that reason, you know, I think it could be just above the RTX 4080 Super. But then we got the final card, the RTX 4090, and this thing is an absolute monster. I think it's priced way too high. We're talking like 85% more than something like the RX 7900 XTX, but you know what? I do feel like based on just performance alone, this probably does deserve to be in A tier. I would say probably bottom of A tier. I think that's pretty fair. I mean, it's it's a great card. It's incredibly powerful. So I think it's fair to throw that into A tier, but Hey guys, that's just what I think. Do you agree with this list? Be sure to let me know in the comments below where you would place each and every single one of these cards. I'd love to read your thoughts on them. And if I got anything wrong, explain to me why in the comments below. And once again, be sure to use those affiliate links in the description below if you're interested in any of these cards. But that's gonna do it for today's video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.